Uh, yes, so as I already mentioned, uh, Ilya, when, when we met uh, in 2014, um, you were back then a historian in residence at this museum in Resleaf near St. Petersburg. Can yeah, you... A research fellow. Research fellow. Yeah, also press secretary. <laughs> yeah, so uh, can you just briefly contextualize what, what is this museum and later how, how did you switch from this role as a historian into role of an artist looking at this museum? Actually, this museum is the oldest uh, Lenin museum um, ever. Uh, it was uh, established uh, in 1924, so uh, uh, soon after uh, Lenin's demise. Mm -hmm. He died uh, in 1923, 1924, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 24, 24, so the, the, same, the same year. And uh, what is really remarkable that uh, all this uh, story about his uh, underground period uh, in February, uh, in, after the February Revolution in 1917, was quite uh, obscure uh, until until uh, the very uh, the very moment until 1924, uh, because you know uh, it was uh, shortly after the civil war, and uh, the civil war. Uh, always has a quality of you know kind of open end you know nobody knows who 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 is going to defeat you know and um, so it wasn't known uh, there was no information about his hideouts so it and it 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 it, it, it uh, had become known only after Lenin died and uh, some of his uh, comrades of the time, old Bolsheviks, um, just uh, shared some stories about this underground period where he, yeah, that he had been hiding, um, when exactly, and, and so on. And still it's not completely clear, and uh, for decades it was an object of um, historical research for Soviet historians. Very scrupulous, yeah. So, and uh, at some point, I uh, just um, uh, got the job, like a daytime job, as a, as a museum employee, mm -hmm. and uh, it coincides with um, manifesta uh, coming to Saint Petersburg, and uh, we meet with Jan, and, uh, and um, it's. It grew naturally, this project, I would say. Uh, yeah, as, as you can see, I always found it so fascinating, you know, that how this place is blocked from forgetting that you have this little hut and then you have this kind of a not white cube, but this glass cube that is superimposed on it and uh, supposed yeah, to, to keep this as a Rio de Memoir. Uh, but it, it, so just in, in short, um, we worked together, your main uh, topic was the end of this museum after, uh, the, the muse revolution museum after the end of the ideology. Uh, how did you, let's see, maybe, oh, that, that was the piece? Would yeah, you like to introduce it, just very shortly? Yes, uh, it was quite important. Yeah, the kind of common uh, faith of uh, revolutionary museums after the collapse of Soviet Union and the uh, arrival of uh, kind of neoliberalism as an official <laughs> ideology of, uh, I mean, on the both sides of the border uh, of a former Iron Curtain, I would say. So uh, the, 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 the common fate of uh, these museums is uh, so-called de-ideologization. Um, it means that uh, nobody cares about uh, value of uh, old museum displays, museum displays of Soviet era. So uh, they mostly treat it as a kind of something outdated uh, that has no historical value. It's they, they, it's understood mostly as um, just in 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 instrumental key, like uh, uh, something to provide with. Uh, 
certain opinion, to provide viewers with certain view on history. So nobody treat uh, old uh, displays, museum displays, as um, uh, really valuable things, as really historical sources. It's just uh, for most of uh, like a new museum administrations, it's like uh, something belong be, that belong belong belongs to the past and should be uh, should be renovated or kind of changed uh, according the ruling uh, uh, official point of view. <laughs> so what what happened in the Razlif Museum? They basically uh, they had. Uh, it's exactly what Nora Sternfeld recently called uh, auratization. So they uh, just forged um, kind of Lenin paraphernalia of uh, his uh, time he was hiding literally in the field, in the in the, you know hay shelter <laughs> for a few weeks. Uh, just found some you know piece of. Firewood, something like this, axe, and but you multiply yeah, 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 yeah. I just want want to say. So, uh, yeah, in post-Soviet time, they dismantled this display. That was really like a, a, a auratization of this object, and uh, just put it on the floor without glass boxes, without these vitrines. And um, we decided to put it back, and we also forged it. So we also and multiplied. And uh, it was a kind of comment, comment to to the way of thinking about museum display. So we basically we we brought it back. Uh, I should say that I I did this project with Natasha Krajewska as well, another artist uh, who contributed much. Uh, and and uh, what is also interesting about this museum? Yes, uh, just uh, just an uh, ordinary trunk. But it's called the Green Study, the legends. It's, you know, it's all uh, kind of myth, mythologization in a way, uh, or neurotization, a good example of neurotization. Uh, it's a called Green Study. Uh, according to legend, Lenin uh, had been working there on the state of <laughs> and revolution. So it's a, it's a chair and table. Yeah. Um, but can I say just one thing? Uh, you you po you pose the question: uh, Why we basically go with it? Why why we uh, approaching such topic as revolution and Lenin? Mm -hmm. I would say that I wouldn't put this question at all because for me it's unnatural not to uh, not to deal <laughs> with politics, not to deal with such topics, because. Uh, uh, sorry, probably I'm too, too pompous, but I think it's uh, to deal with Lenin revolution, such a heavy and, 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 and uh, big topics is uh, more or less the same as for theater di director, uh, stage Hamlet, you know, or some other big things. So this is a kind of, it should be ambition of artists, I think, that this is responsibility also. It's just hard task, and it, this is a challenge. So for me, this is a challenge. That's it. But what is also interesting is that you have a certain methodology of a historian, but then you also have a liberty of an artist, and it's also interesting how you merge those two, those two together. So let's go to uh, yeah. actually to Helsinki. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah, we have some time. Yeah, still. yeah, we have still some time. Um, so you moved to Helsinki in 2015, and then. Yeah. You rented a flat in this the same at the same address in the same building where there was this memorial room of, of Lenin. Uh, but 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 uh, not the same apartment. I know. Yeah. So yeah. let's uh, maybe this is this is uh, Hakanimi around, hundred years ago around that period, mm -hmm. and uh, tell us a little bit about what you have you have done an immense research now together with Sarah and Lassie about the history of this memorial room. Uh, yeah, as a, t tell us more about this. And also yeah, how I, I try to be concise and also I'm very happy that uh, Mia and I'm a Minkinen, uh, I'm a Minkinen former director of uh, Lenin Museum in Tampere and, uh, uh, and um, Mia Heinima is uh, 
uh, chief researcher of um, that museum, this museum, that museum. Um, now uh, they are here, and uh, they, uh, I think, uh, uh, will correct me if I, if I if I if I if I make some mistake. Um, uh, try to be concise. So uh, the episode is um, took place. I mean. Uh, uh, I mean, what uh, we are talking about <laughs> historically uh, in in the very uh, in the, in the, in the end of August, beginning of September, and September, 1917. So, uh, uh, chief of Helsinki police Kusta Rovio uh, was hiding Lenin in his flat. So Lenin Lenin was hiding from. Uh, uh, had been hiding from the prosecution of provisional government, uh, 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 accused as a German agent because of his uh, his radical anti-war stance at that time. And uh, so, uh, what is remarkable that uh, uh, it was the last Lenin's hideout before the October Revolution, and he was working. Uh, on um, preparing, apprising there, and uh, working on his uh, book, um, uh, State and Revolution, at the same time. So, uh, but uh, what is important, and you also asked, um, uh, what's the connection? How 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 uh, how my role as historian uh, refers to the role of artist, and vice versa. So this is for me. It's really important. Uh, important, um, um, how to say, knowledge from from history, and uh, important um, kind of awareness. But we, what we can borrow, we artists can borrow from history, is that we have no direct access to the past as such. But we have access to this to sources, and we can cons consider a museum display and also dismantled museum display, uh, lost museum display as a source. So uh, this is very important to, to divide, to, to distinguish, uh, to separate one from another, not to mix uh, the past and the source, <laughs> and uh, so this is why this is muse museum of the museum. This is why I, I call uh, I, I I call this project uh, I entitled this project Museum of the Museum. So this is not about Lenin, but about sources, about this museum. And um, uh, as for as for history of the museum, yes, uh, uh, so what we see now it is is uh, the display of original. Uh, memorial room, Lenin Muista Hone, um, how um, it was built in uh, 1976. Uh, and uh, I, I'm very proud that we managed to um, to get all the uh, original objects involved in, 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 in this exhibition, in, in, the, in the original display. Uh, we managed to get it to get it to, to, to our permanent exhibition. And, um, uh, and um, uh, it became possible uh, only because of uh, uh, friendly support and understanding of Verstas Museum and, uh, and the huge support and help of Mia Henima. Um, so, uh, briefly about the history of, of this uh, museum, about uh, this memorial room. Uh, so, what you see here in this uh, in this photo uh, is not a, is not original Kustarovio belongings. It's not his furniture. This is copies. These are copies. Uh, the thing is. Uh, uh, he managed to, uh, then he immigrated to, to Soviet Russia after defeat of Reds. Uh, he managed to, to bring uh, his original furniture to um, Leningrad in uh, 19, 
1929 and donated to Museum of, Revol of Revolution. So, and his original, uh, uh, his authentic objects are still there. And uh, for this museum um, that was designed and built in uh, 1975, 1976, they uh, produced copies of original furniture in Moscow. And what we have in our display is the copies. Yeah, so I think it's kind of accomplishment <laughs> Uh, that we uh, um, copies, yeah, yeah. That, 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 that we managed to to, uh, to to get it together again in the room but it's yeah, does it work yeah but it's interesting uh, that the original furniture was sent to russia so it's kind of it was not on it was in the museum of the revolution but not on the display so this furniture is kind of imprisoned in russia the original one and you are interested in that moment of time in 76 when these copies were produced. Yes, uh, yes, and for me it was a kind of, um, kind of, uh, a small chance. <laughs> probably in Benjamin, in Benjamin side, uh, in Benjamin sense, to uh, to um, to use it for a conceptual art project. Yeah, this uh, tautology of this copy. So it looked already as a something. Very ar artistic. But exactly, you yeah. said something that Lenin, uh, that for you it, it, work, yeah. it connects. Uh, uh, that for you it connects also with Lenin and his uh, love for dialectics and tautology. What you have done, <laughs> how does it connect? <laughs> um, <laughs> Lenin and language is a huge topic, and. Uh, uh, let me uh, let me use uh, our talk to introduce also another project we're going to to publish in Rab Rab uh, Rab Rab Press. It will be publication of um, uh, language of language of Lenin issue of Lev Journal uh, uh, collection of articles uh, discussing discussing uh, Lenin's attitude to uh, to language and basically. Uh, basically, uh, I think Sesgin Bonik is is very right person to 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 show how how Lenin, Lenin's dialectics, Lenin's approach works uh, works in language. But um, so so all all these things is they sound and they is they are very natural for like a very very uh, familiar to conceptual art, you know, language and politics at the same time. And uh, Lenin's use of dialectics, dialectics very known. Uh, basically, we can we can just open any article and we see uh, examples uh, examples of this kind of thinking. Uh, but as for as for as for um, how I used that, um, basically I wrote it in in the exhibition statement. Uh, the main thing is. Uh, for example, that it it, it 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 probably wrong to pose the question as historical exhibition or art exhibition. So to 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 understand it dialectically and to pose it dialectically, this is art exhibition that took a took a shape of historian, historical, mm -hmm. historical display, and. Um, yeah, but uh, but uh, 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 I would uh, I would prefer <laughs> to be honest to, to back to the history of the museum and we have video yeah. uh, we recorded uh, we we commissioned from one Moscow document documentalist uh, some interiors of uh, of original museum and I, I I should comment only one photo it's there so this is the only uh, only remained photo this one of um, display of Rovio. Authentic, uh, uh, authentic belongings, authentic furniture in the Museum of Revolution in Leningrad. So this photo uh, made in uh, uh, was made in uh, uh, 1929, and uh, they dism dismantled this uh, this uh, uh, this uh, exhibition after Rovio was executed in in the 1930 uh, 19, 1938 being accused and charged uh, as a, a participant of allegedly anti-Soviet uh, conspiracy, Trotskyist conspiracy. So, and 
after destalinization, uh, they returned some objects to the display and they made a display in uh, marble polish, uh, the uh, Museum of Revolution was located uh, until the early 90s. So, but the rest of, uh, of photos are from, from the display at, at Hakaniemi. Your favorite term uh, is that those are the authentic fakes. Authentic fakes. Yes, uh, this is really interesting because uh, this question of uh, authenticity uh, has become, in a way, like a leitmotiv <laughs> for, for this project. Uh, for example, uh, this furniture, you see this chair, set of chairs, are copies made in Moscow. And, uh, and, we'll, and we'll, we'll watch a video uh, of a chief desi designer of the um, uh, Lenin Museum in Moscow who uh, basically designed this apartment. His name is Alexander Shapin. So this, uh, this uh, copy is made in Moscow, but this uh, uh, writing desk uh, was loaned from... Uh, Helsinki City Museum. So if we now show it in our display these chairs, we can call it authentic fakes. But this writing desk, can we or not expand this term of uh, notion of authenticity to this writing desk? Because it was just uh, just object of the period. Yeah. Okay, before we show the film, I have a last yeah. question. Um, because there was a period where this memory was brought back mm -hmm. yeah, between 76 and 93, so after the end of Soviet Union it dismantled. Yeah. But you also bring in some sense this memory. So why, uh, you said already, it's, for you it's a, you know, the, the most complicated thing, but why, would it, why is it important to bring back for you? What do you see in this memory? Why do you bring it back? Clean myself under under Lenin, as Mayakovsky wrote. Um, clean up myself under Lenin, in his poem Lenin. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I just uh, kind of very ambitious artist. I want to, you know, uh, kind of uh, ask Mr. Lenin to pick me up. You know, <laughs> publicity. No, no, no. I'm joking. Uh, basically, yes. I, I already said that for me, for me, it's uh, very challenging, very challenging, very interesting. And uh, to my understanding, revolution is uh, just core of uh, of uh, of uh, uh, of a contemporary subjectivity of uh, of uh, of our civilization. I would say, revolution is a kernel of it. And um, for me, the question. Uh, is posed as a kind of pa paradoxical way, I would say, uh, as an artist, as an artist who trying to follow the tradition of conceptual art, I clearly understand that art cannot be about. This is not an illustration. This is not kind of supplement for some idea. So everything extraneous to art you know, it's just, just extraneous. So art is like geometry, it's like, is art, uh, art is like, uh, it's intellectual operation. At the same time, we are all political animals. <laughs> what can I do? So we kind of, we, we eager, we, we thirsty to, 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 you know, to discuss important things. And this is, this is what we are. Revolution is the origin of all philosophy from, I don't know, from Kant and Hegel to Badiou. Everything originated in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the event or, you know, multi-faced event of revolution. So uh, the question how to deal with it. And also what it is important to say that uh, October revolution, or I would prefer to, to consider 1917, the year of 1917, as a whole revolutionary process. So revolution, I would say, the revolution of 1917, so February Revolution, July Crisis, and uh, October Revolution, uh, under-reflect, under-reflected still, both in philosophy and in arts. Because we have 
a huge uh, uh, body of literature, philosophical, theoretical literature about French Revolution. And uh, a lot of different historical schools discussed French Revolution. And uh, as I said, uh, it's a sor source for philosophical thinking. And uh, October Revolution definitely deserves uh, this uh, deeper reflection, both in uh, theory and uh, art. Thank you, Ilya. And let's uh, let's see now an extract from the interview with the originalist. Daniel yes. Two last minutes of it. Yes. We are running. Uh, please, extract. please, please. Six All six minutes. minutes. Okay. Мы сделали копии, вернее, сделали чертежи, сделали копии с этих вещей. Очень долго делал. Я думаю, что это, наверное, год делалось вся вот это вот. Потому что надо было там сделать кресло, диванчик, трюмо, кровать металлическую. Какие-то были предметы на кухне. Кроме того, что сделалось, делалось в Москве, еще к этому процессу присоединился музей Хельсинки как исторический. Там, ну, в основном посуда какая-то кухонная, какие-то вилки, тарелки. Телефон, я помню, был. Эриксон. Это он там был. Такой, знаете, деревянный, настенный. Судя по всему, письменный стол тоже они дали. Ну, в общем, короче говоря, они дополнили вот такими предметами вот эту всю экспозицию. Кроме вот этой мемориальной части, там была такая экспозиционная часть. Это как бы биографическая. Это фотографии, турникеты и скульптурный портрет Ленина связаны с его биографией. Это, вот, это, это сохранилось, это находится сейчас после демонтажа в Тампере. Эти предметы, значит, они делались в Москве. Значит, э, мебель делалась э, на кафедре художественной мебели Строгановского училища. Кроме этого, был подключен текстильный институт, и они нам делали обивку, потому что это мягкая мебель. Металлическую кровать, поскольку сколько уже -то никаких металлических кроватей в природе не было, значит, нашли вот эту панцирную сетку и фабрика, которая делает вот эти крутящиеся конторские стулья, она сделала вот эту кровать. Самое очень, очень хорошо сделано. Конечно, все это делалось на научной основе. Там была такая старшая научный сотрудник, Наумова Лидия Сергеевна, она, значит, делала тематика инвестиционный план всего этого, ну, есть историческая справка, вот. А монтировали непосредственно финские рабочие, там, два-три человека, я не помню точно сколько. И э, огромную э, работу вело общество... Э, Финляндия СССР. Так, да. Там был такой человек, я его запомнил на всю жизнь, я буду помнить всегда. Мати Линд. Видимо, он швед. швед. Мати Линд. Он прекрасно знал русский язык, потому что он учился здесь в высшей комсомольской школе в Москве. Обладал э, невероятным чувством юмора и невероятной трудоспособностью. И вот, значит, он, вот мы монтировали 10-12 дней, я точно сейчас не скажу, и он каждый день с утра приходил, уже в конце мы по столько сколько не успевали, он, значит, нам приносил всякую там еду. Кроме того, вот в этой всей, так сказать, истории участвовал Директор музея Ленина, тогда он был директором музея Ленина, Пава Йокела, Пава Йокела, Пава Йоханя Йокела. 
это мой нынешний друг. Вот, потом мы поехали в Тампере, ну, как бы ознакомительная экскурсия с музеем Ленина. И встретили там еще одного человека. Это был, у них там такая система, был такой директорат, и был главный человек. Звали его Вейко Вейлахти. Вейко Вейлахти. Это социал-демократ, фантастический человек. Вот я таких редко встречал. И вот с тех самых пор, я много раз, потом был в Финляндии, очень много раз, и я каждый раз к нему, он умер, к сожалению, уже. И мать Элинта умер, и Вейка. Вот, и это была величина в социал-демократическом движении. Я просто этого не знал, потому что у нас, знаете, как социал-демократы -демо, социал какие-то, коммунисты. Вот, и э, вот вся эта история, кроме того, что мы сделали полезное дело, она вот сопровождалась знакомством с великолепными людьми. И что удивительно, для меня до сих пор я не был членом коммунистической партии. И мне самому это странно. Видимо, это недоразумение какое-то. И когда директор узнала, что я... Она что-то спросила. Ну, вы же были на партсобрании? Я говорю, Сергей, да я же не член партии. Как? Я вам пишу рекомендацию. И вот тут я понял, что надо как-то менять свой образ жизни. Потому что там были такие люди, которых я не очень уважал или мягко выражаясь. Почему я люблю музеи делать? Потому что музеи – это дополнительные знания и дополнительное, ну, какой-то взгляд это в историю туда. Интересно, основном, интересно. Вот. Ну, я не знаю, чем вызван у Ильи этот приступ такой нежности к этому музею. Но он такой вообще упертый, этот Илья. Может, это хорошо.